Oh, hello there, ladies and germs. Elton McFall here, aka Retro Old School, trying to replicate the past as best as I can to my ability and experience in assembling models. Uh, this is part three to this little series on this Boeing 747 model that I'm putting together. And uh, I just uh, finished putting some work on it there. And uh, happy to bring you an update video on her. Things are going smoothly, and uh, I just finished just now uh, putting the wings on her. The um, the tail wings on the back, they were a piece of cake to put on. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I gotta do a little bit of uh, touching up over here. Put a little extra foil there on that space. Where the primer is there, that's gonna have to be fixed. And uh, one of the front wings was easy to put, easy, pretty easy to put on. The other one was a real pain in the ass. I was afraid I was going to break the fucking model, actually. Really pushing it hard, putting tons of pressure on it to get it on there. And lots of other stuff I've done, too, as well. as Yes, as you can see, I put together the, uh, the two fuselage pieces together. That was pretty easy to do, actually. You have to tape them together so that there's enough time for the glue to hold the two pieces together. It reminded me of when I had uh, put together that uh, chrome tanker for my white Freightliner cab over semi truck there years ago. It was the same process. You gotta, you know, use elastics or tape to, to keep the two pieces together because they're big pieces. So they, they you know, it takes a, a little bit more time for the, the glue to dry, you know. And uh, yeah, the reason why it's not sitting correctly is because the rear landing gear is uneven. I had a little bit of trouble with that. Here's what the underneath looks like. But there's going to be more landing here, as you can see where those holes are in the wings. So that I'm going to make sure those are nice and, and even so that the plane sits evenly. Not kind of sitting on its arse there. Very happy with the way I did the old uh, uh, AA uh, logo in the rear. And using, of course, the uh, this uh, picture here of a uh, uh, somewhat shorter 747 uh, taken God knows when, 80s, 90s, I don't know. And uh, touched up also little things like the American uh, letters here, which were which I did, I think, a better job freehand than the other side because the other side, they're good too, but they're a little bit more spaced apart. So I guess you could say it has the ultimate fall artist touch. Uh, what else? Also, I had to touch up the, just slightly the, the nose of this plane because you know it's in the fuselage is in two pieces so i had to make sure that at least the the stripes are coherently you know together not like kind of really obviously separate and um so then of course the engine assemblies that's going to take some time i'll show you what i mean here you got the the housings are right here here's the housings i think that's going to be the easy part right and uh, I've seen in some pictures some of the, the tips of the, uh, the engine housings are chromed. I thought about doing that and I'm like, no, no, I'm trying to keep this as simple as it is considering there's a lot of work still left here to do. And then I have these, uh, what, what are they called, the slots here. I've got to put all these two together. Or the winglets, I think they're called as well. Or mind you, the winglets are usually on, on the tips of the wings. But anyway, they go under here, under there as well. And... Um, also, the engines themselves, man, I mean, there's four engines. Look at all the work there is to, to assemble those engines, all those turbine fans and all that. So that's not going to be quick, quick. Not going to be chop, chop. There's the stand. This thing comes with a stand, but I don't want the stand because I haven't determined whether I'm going to put it on the end table there or it's going to be on the coffee table here. I might even put it on my fridge because I think that's going to be the safest place. What do you think, Gloria? Pretending to sleep again. Hmm? And as you can see, there's more pieces of the engine right here. And the sun has come out for a change today. Very nice, considering it's like friggin' three degrees for crying out loud. And what are we today? Or two degrees. It's like, Christ, today's the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh. And there you have it, the 8th of May, for Christ's sake. Unreal, man. They're saying we're in a polar vortex. No shit. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Another thing, obviously, I forgot to mention that you might have noticed I'm not in my office because, well, really, for two reasons. First of all, the lighting is better here because all the I have in the office is one little fucking window this size. 
which is for the birds, whereas here I have two, three. I have the overhead lighting, which I don't have in the office. Another big advantage point, and as well as uh, the fact of the matter that I got my tunes here, man. I got my internet tunes. I got the subwoofer with the speakers. You know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm rocking things here to the classic rock or whatever else I feel like listening to. That's a big deal, you know. By the way, I just want to add my feature that. I don't care for that car parked across the street. But damn, that's a beautiful shade of blue, though, you know? Very nice. So that's it, guys. So uh, part four will be coming up uh, sometime soon. I'm on a roll with this thing. I'm trying to work on it as much as I can. Boy, there's a lot of traffic for a pandemic. I ain't looking at all these people driving and walking around. And and it reminds me of something bizarre I filmed earlier. But anyway, uh, that's uh, interesting as itself. So... Uh, and of course, I'd like to take the opportunity to, of course, thank all you guys for watching my videos and it makes a difference in your day or in your week or whatever in this crazy life we're living in. And uh, to, to, of course, stay safe and please, you know, hey, I always appreciate your positive comments and uh, informative comments as well. And um, and uh, what else? Also, check me out on Patreon, Elton McFall. Or if you want to forget about Patreon and not want to become a member, even though it's appreciated on a monthly basis, you want to send me a gratuity, let's call it as a gratuity, uh, you can send that report to my email, which is Elton McFall, Elton like Elton John, McFall, M C F A L L, McFall, at hotmail.com. Uh, you can send that with my email through PayPal or in Canada with an interact e transfer. And thanks again for watching. And I hope this video inspires you to, maybe uh, with the time that people have now, to assemble your own models or do a painting or a drawing. And uh, I'm actually itching. Maybe after this I won't do a model. Maybe after this I'll uh, actually uh, do a painting instead. You know, I don't know. Like like that monarch there, or my Christine. I'm thinking about that. I'm really uh, noodling that. So uh, once the stores eventually reopen, I'll, I'll go to Mare de Serre and buy myself a nice canvas. Nice big canvas. And uh, so that's it, guys. And uh, take care. And uh, I hate it when I do these types of videos. Always the one thing I hate is I keep thinking I'm forgetting something. It's like if I go to the grocery store and I always forget to buy that one thing, you know. Anyway, whatever. So uh, take care. And uh, thanks again. And keep your puck on the ice. Eh? Uh, keep your puck on the ice. Keep your stick on the ice. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, guys. Take care. Adios.